Hey, I'm Hank, and we're downtown at Golden Age Collectibles in Vancouver. We're talking today with Nathan Fairburn about his new book, Lake of Fire. It's published by Image Comics and it's drawn by Matt Smith. So, what is Lake of Fire about, Matt? Uh, what is Lake of Fire about? Uh... I guess if it were a Zack Snyder movie, it would be called uh, Knights vs. Aliens, uh, and that's, I guess, the elevator pitch, but uh, uh, hopefully it's about a little bit more than that. Um, so the story takes place in 12th century AD uh, in the south of France um, during the Albigensian Crusade, which was a particularly... Uh, well, I guess they were all fairly horrific, but it was it was it was pretty well known as as one of the worst ones. Um, it's the crusade that gave us the the uh, expression "kill them all and let God sort them out." Um, so there were these these heretics called the Cathars who were Christians, but they were the wrong kinds of Christians, and so the Catholic Church uh, conducted a crusade against them to basically just wipe them out and also to steal their land. Um, and they did a fantastic job of that. Uh, they uh, they rolled up uh, the first city. They they came to was Beziers, which was a city of 20,000 people, some Catholics, some heretics, some just a mixed bag, and uh, they broke down the gates and then the, the crusaders asked the papal legate in charge, you know, what do we, how do we know who are the heretics and who are the good Catholics, and the, the papal legate said, kill them all, God shall know his own. And they did, they massacred the entire city of 20,000 people, men, women, children, Catholics and heretics alike, they just killed them all. And then they went on to the next city and did more or less the same thing for 20 years. Um, so it's a really nice time in the history. Yeah. Um, but into that setting, um, so we follow uh, a small cast of characters who are basically an embarrassment to the crusade uh, proper. We have this young lordling who is just out for a bit of glory and adventure. We have this broken down war horse who's just been basically ethnically cleansing for 15 years and he's just a wreck. Um, and we have this total zealot inquisitor who just enjoys burning people alive. And they're, they're too much of a disaster even for the Crusades and so the the leader of the Crusades sends them off basically on a fool's errands to go you know cleanse this village of maybe there's heretics or not he just wants them out of the camps for a while and so while they're up there in the mountains uh, the French Pyrenees an alien spaceship <laughs> crash lands and that's where we depart from history or do we records from that era are spotty at best so uh, maybe maybe it all happened so I actually it's, it's, I kind of call the book a, a historical fiction and science fiction, so it's like a historical science fiction, right? Because the thing about science fiction for me is I, I can't really get into it because it doesn't really feel grounded. It feels like it doesn't matter, like none of it really matters. And the thing about historical fiction is it feels kind of mundane and like I know how that story ends because I live at the end of that story of hi history. And so historical science fiction kind of has that grounded reality and yet you introduce the fantastic elements that I like about sci-fi. So uh, yeah, so it's a, it follows a small group of crusaders, um, a, a heretic, this girl. Uh, the interesting thing about the Cathars is that they actually allowed women to be uh, prefects of their church. Um, and so uh, one of our main characters is this, this girl named Bernadette. She is uh, a prefect of the Cathar church. And uh, so she has to kind of team up with these crusaders to defeat the, the aliens. Um, so the spaceship, you know, it's, it's a spaceship that has been just overrun by hordes of these interstellar parasites that have devoured the crew and, you know, the crew tried to crash land to, like, save themselves as a last-ditch effort and it totally didn't work, but... Um, anyway, these nasty critters come out from the, the crash site and start eating people and, uh, and our crusaders, as literal soldiers of God, you know, they just perceive these horrible creatures to be aliens and so in their minds, you know, it's actually their job, their duty to fight these these creatures off. And uh, yeah, so really low concept, you know, not a lot going on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's about a lot of stuff. It's about how, it's about faith, it's about, you know, it's about how religion um, can make people do some really awful things, um, but it can also give people incredible courage to do inc crazy things and to be their best selves and I don't know that's really interesting to me and uh, those are the themes that the book works with but ultimately it's a book about knights smashing aliens with swords and maces and yeah
That's, so, that's what it's about. So it seems like you are a person who digs on historical context. Like, what was what was the sort of inspiration that made you want to start working on that? Uh, it, you know what? I'm 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 really not. Like, I just did a lot of research into it. Like, I like I have a lot of stories that I want to tell after this one, um, and they're in all kinds of different genres. You know, like I I I would like to write a crime noir. You know, I have a couple all ages book ideas that I want to work on. Um, I just think whatever I'm writing, I get really deep into and. And, you know, you have to find the passion in it. But uh, I wouldn't say that I am actually that interested in historical fiction. But, uh, you know, I, that's what I'm telling. And so I got into it and I did a lot of research into it. And I found the parts that interested me and that excited me. And, uh, and I used that. But the, the genesis of the story was just, you know, I was, uh, I was actually talking with a, a friend of mine. Um, his name is Jason Kapelka. He's got a credit in the book, actually. Um, and he's, uh, he's also from Vancouver. And he is an old friend who uh, is enormously successful. He founded PopCap, which is uh, Bejeweled and Plants vs. Zombies. He owns the Stormcrow Tavern and the Stormcrow Alehouse in town. Um, he is a... I don't know if this is a spoiler alert, he might be involved with the mysterious package company that sends random stuff to people. I don't know if you've ever heard of this thing. It's a Canadian... It's very interesting. He's got all his fingers in a lot of pies. Um, and so we were spitballing the idea of uh, doing a, a digital comics startup, a digital publisher, um, similar to like Madefire or Stella or something like that. I don't know if you're aware of those. Um, and so Lake of Fire was originally going to be our inaugural kind of offering on that platform. Um, so we kind of, you know, spitballed the, the core of the, the idea the, of the story together. Um, and then I, I was writing it because he obviously was a very busy guy and I went away and I did a year of research and development and you know I, I got to a point where I was I was ready to go and then we kind of realized that that I don't think Jason wanted to start up you know a business just to publish his buddy's dumb comic books so that didn't happen but I had you know I'd written the thing and so I just I just wrote it up as a pitch and sent it off to, uh, to Image and uh, they leapt at it, and I found uh, I found an artist, Matt Smith. How'd you come across Matt Smith? Because the art is so good. It's really good, it's isn't so it? Good. Yeah. Like, it's so character specific, and at the same time, it still has a slightly cartoony feel. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. Like I, I'm I'm so happy with with what Matt has brought to the project. Like he's really, I mean, you know the. the at the time, I felt like the story, the whole thing was very realized before I even brought him on board, like in my head, right? But having brought him in, like, you know, he is, he is a full co-creator of this book. Like, he, we've, we've worked so collaboratively, it's been amazing because we do everything together, right? Like, I write it, I script it, and then he does the roughs, and then he sends the roughs to me, and then I'll, like, give him notes on those and maybe some doodles in it. I can't draw nearly as well as him, but I can draw well enough to say maybe this would be good. And then he'll take that and draw it properly, and then he'll ink it and finish it and send it to me, and then I color it, and then he's also a really good colorist, so I'll send the colors back to him, and he gives his feedback on the color, and then I letter it, and then, you know, put it all together. So we do everything in the book, just the two of us, right? So it's it's just a really fantastic collaboration. And I just I just found him on Facebook. Like, I think I'm, I'm, I follow, I'm friends with Mike Mignola on Facebook, and he liked something Matt had drawn, and I was like, who's this guy? And I kind of had my eye on him uh, for, I guess, a year before I approached him. And, um, and initially, you know, I tried to get all the guys I usually work with to draw this story for me. I, I asked Chris Burnham, I asked Yannick Paquette, you know, I asked pretty much everyone I've ever worked with to draw this thing. And, uh, you know, for some crazy reason, they wanted to draw comics written by Grant Morrison or something instead of by me. So they passed on the, on the offer. And so I, I, I literally just did that thing that that irritates the hell out of any professional artist where a guy writes you an email out of the blue and says hey you don't know who I am but will you please draw my comic book for me and uh, and that said okay you know I mean it helped that I had a publisher and uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah so he, he climbed on board and that was about two years ago so this has been a long gestation and uh, we started full-on production of it uh, last year and we're just working on issue five right now so it's, it's gonna come out bang 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 every month
So Man, yeah. it's so funny that you mentioned that it was Mike Magnolia you found before, because that is like the first thing I thought when I first yeah. saw the pictures from it, is that it that's what it reminds me yeah. of. Um, and I don't know how much of that is also like the country setting and the demons give it almost a sure. boy sort of texture that way. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and Matt is a very humble guy. And so, like most great artists, I think are very humble and self deprecating. And he, you know, he constantly, you know, talks about how his influences are, are too obvious. But I think there's, there's no better validation of having a style than the people who inspired that style giving you compliments, right? So Magnolia often comments, this looks great, this looks amazing. You know, he doesn't think, yeah, this is, are you ripping me off? No, he's like, this looks really good. Like you're doing a thing and it, it is different from what Magnolia does, but it's, it's clearly, you know, influenced by, you know, one of the living masters of comic book art, right? Like, I mean, you mentioned him through a rock and you'd find, you'd, you have a good chance of hitting someone influenced by Mike Magnolia. So yeah, there's, there's worse people to be influenced by for sure. So is it mini series or ongoing? Or? Um, it's a, it's it's conceived as a as a mini series, but uh, you know I've got a, I, I would love to tell another story in this world. Uh, this the speed that Matt works at, he's not a monthly guy. Um, <laughs> So I, you know, the last thing I want to do is have a book that comes out and then doesn't come out, you know, that comes out and then maybe comes out two months later and then it comes out four months later and then no one knows what's going to happen. So we wanted to have the whole thing mostly done, you know, before we even launched that first book. So it's, it's a five issue mini that, um, you know, if people buy and make some money, um, I, we'd both, you know, be happy to do a sequel kind of too, you know, if you think of it like that. But, uh, yeah, I guess it, it, it is a miniseries, but I would like nothing more than for it to be a, enough of a success that we could tell more stories in this world, because it ends on a very satisfying uh, conclusion, but it's like a, you know, a franchise blockbuster where you could pick up some of those, those, those loose ends of the story and, and run with them. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for coming down. I know we got people waiting on you, so we'll okay. head down there and sign some comics. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me, and thanks for supporting the book. Uh, Diamond uh, sends me like the top ten stores that uh, that ordered my book. They get a breakdown of it. You guys are number three, baby. Nice. Yeah, Golden that's Age. Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. Thanks so much for coming down, Nathan. The book is Lake of Fire. We're at Golden Age Collectibles in downtown Vancouver.